Did we go where? Right next. Yeah, yeah, we went there. Yeah, next to that. No, we didn't even see that. Are you joking? Frustrating. That's one of many different words that I could use to describe that feeling. When you've been on an incredible road trip miles from home, you get back just to find out that you missed some of the most iconic and beautiful views on the entire road trip. But luckily for you, I thought I'd share some of our best practices in this video to help you become better at finding some of those hidden gems on your next road trip. But before we do that, it's time for a Starbucks. Now, I'm guessing everyone watching this video has used Google Maps at some point. I mean, how else do you find things? But did you know that you can actually create your own private Google Map? A map that stores everything that you put on it and keeps it just for you. Well, you can, and I'll show you how. First things first, you want to head across to Google Maps, and then from there you'll notice on the left-hand side we've got an icon that says saved. Click on that, and then click Maps. Scroll to the bottom of this section and click Create Map. And there we have it. Once you click Create again, you have your very own map. You can name this whatever you want and drop places on there. That'll stay on there until you delete them. You can change the icons, you can change whatever you want and you've got this on your phone or any other devices as well as your computer. It's as simple as that. Now the second part of this tip may sound just completely ridiculous to even give it as a tip, but it is and bear with us. And that is just to zoom in more. Now. To put this into perspective, Google Maps, even the map side of it, works on an algorithm. So basically what it does is it shows you all the type of things that it thinks you want to see. The downside of that is it always shows you the stuff that it thinks you want to see, the stuff that you normally do, beaches, that kind of stuff. Whatever is your thing, it'll show you more of that. And that's all well and good, but it's not the best situation for trying to find new and hidden things. To give you an example of this, we'd been to Akmelvik Beach, which is this one. <laughs> We've been there about six or seven times and what we hadn't actually noticed is that Europe's smallest castle is literally 100 meters from where we were and we'd never seen it in the six or seven times that we'd visited previously. The only way we did find it was actually through an accidental zoom in on Google Maps and I was like, what the hell is that? And we ended up going on a little adventure finding it and it was cool, it was unique and it's not something that we expected and we were very surprised that we hadn't actually seen it before. And had it not been for that little accidental zoom in, we would never have found it. So that is tip number two or one part two, whatever you want to call it. Just zoom into Google Maps a little bit more. So I found this abandoned farm. Um, it's in the Pennines actually, which is where we're heading today. It looks cool. I want to go and grab some photographs of it But one thing I have noticed when I go on it on Google Maps is it actually has one review Now it is an abandoned farm. It's just an old knackered building by the looks of it But the review itself is what intrigued us more let's say because the review says R.I.P. Robert Snowball I haven't got a clue what that's about. It's a little bit of a strange review. Not gonna lie. What I didn't actually realise is that the abandoned farm we were about to visit had been the scene of a brutal murder years ago. I'll explain a little bit more about this later in the video. The next suggestion that I'll give you will save you a ton of time and that is to have a look through some travel guides. Now, if we use our travel guides as an example, the process of writing them is pretty gruelling. It involves months of research, loads of time in the area, loads of time photographing the area, then even more time writing about the area. That much so that if there's actually something there, the chances are we found it and included it in the guide. So it's gonna save you all that time for yourself because we've put the time in. The process is hard, it's time consuming, it's full of ups and downs, and it's actually a process that always ends up looking a little bit like this. Ah, oh, a new project. I don't know what else to write. Why is it taking so long? Finally, it's done. Then we do it all over again. Ah, oh, a new project. I don't know what else to write. Why is it taking so long? Finally, it's done. And again. Ah, oh, a new project. I don't know what else to write. Why is it taking so long? Finally, it's done. And again. Ah, oh, a new project. I don't know what else to write. Why is it taking so long? Finally, it's done. And again. Ah, oh, a new project. I don't know what else to write. Why is it taking so long? Finally, it's done. We have five different travel guides available currently, which is the Ultimate Scottish Road Trip, the NC500 Improved, the Outer Hebrides, the Isle of Arran and now the new Borderlands 320 travel guide. You can get your hands on any of them in digital form or in physical form at the link 
in the description. wind is horrendous and it, it lit it popped the window open um, the place where we need to get is just kind of there in the distance but I don't know if this is translating very well on video or not but the wind is absolutely brutal what I think we'll do though is we'll make our little pat lunch and we will walk along to the uh, location number one see if we can find some shelter and we'll have some food outside and that's windy and that's horrible but that's part of a day trip it's part of an adventure so I think that's what we're gonna do the wind was absolutely hammering us as we walked across the exposed northern Pennines towards the farmhouse not entirely sure how the audio was gonna be I thought I'd move on to the next tip which is to just talk to people more specifically talk to locals because you'd be surprised how many people do actually explore the local area and know a hell of a lot about that area yes you might speak to friends or the people that have been there but it's generally the locals that know the places better than most this is Glen Rosa on the incredible Isle of Arran we had visited it before but we had no idea that there was a route that climbed Goatfell from Glen Rosa itself until we got talking to the guy at our favourite bakehouse on the island this route was and still is one of the most incredible hiking routes we've ever done and I doubt we would have ever found it were it not for talking to one of the locals so we're nearly there the wind has literally blew me hairline back an inch so we're gonna see what this little spot's like, providing we can actually get to it. Yeah. The story of the Belmont farm murder dates back to 1879. John Snowball was an aging farmer. He lived at the farm with his son Robert and the housekeeper Jane Barron. On New Year's Eve, Robert had gone out to the attached buyer before setting off to Sandford, a farm around about a mile away to see in the new year. Unfortunately, he never arrived. The next morning, his lifeless body was discovered in the upper floor of the byre. He had been struck in the back of the head with some considerable force. Nearby, they also found a heavily bloodstained hammer. Later, the housekeeper Jane Barron was arrested on suspicion of murder. It was thought that Robert's father was far too frail to have carried out the act and there had been no evidence of anyone else at the scene. However, at the trial, Jane Barron was acquitted due to the only evidence being circumstantial. The mystery of who murdered Robert Snowball was never resolved. So I've been recently getting this thing, you've probably heard about it loads, I've mentioned it on tons of videos, but what I haven't said is that I actually also developed my own black and white film. Now the only real way I can show you the emotions that go through us while I'm developing film is through a short video. Developing film is quite the pleasant experience at first. It's almost sunshine and rainbows, there's bunny rabbits and birds, but then... 10 minutes have passed, you've still got your hands in the bloody black bag and you can't find the film, you don't know where it's gone, you kind of get it on the spool and even when you start to get it on the spool it won't wind on. Yeah, it can be a little bit frustrating. That was uh, a bit mad, the wind was absolutely brutal, the farm was really cool to be fair, there's a load of wildlife along that way as well. Um, the downside though when obviously it is as windy as what it is is it's just so risky to um bother trying to go into any sort of derelict buildings or anything like that it's risky anyway at the best of times um but definitely worse when it's 45 mile an hour winds which it is i mean the van i don't know if you can see it on video but the van is literally shaking it's that bad um, but we've got another spot to head to now, which is about 40 minutes away from here. I'm not entirely sure how it's 40 minutes away, because I didn't think it was that far. Um, so we'll see what that one's like. <laughs> Thank you. 
so the sat nav was telling us to head straight on and i've turned left because i've seen what looks like to be another cool abandoned building and that leads us on nicely which is sometimes you don't always have to follow the sat nav because if you see some nice scenery off in one direction why would you go in the opposite way and just follow the sat nav and we've done this on the nc500 there'd been an accident and rather than sitting and waiting for it to be cleared we found an alternative route we didn't have a clue what was going to be there and we ended up driving what was some of our favorite sections of the nc500 completely unintentionally we didn't have a clue what was going to be there and we ended up including that in the nc500 improved travel guide as like a suggested detour because it was that nice so sometimes it is worth just go on whichever way you fancy going because it looks pretty that's the whole point and that looks pretty so i'm going to grab my camera and get a little shot of that and finish this roll of film off after being stuck in traffic while some tractors tried to pull the crashed cars off the road i decided not to just sit and wait not in any rush we headed inland without any idea of where the road would lead us we ended up finding the beautiful loch neva on a gorgeous drive which was very much the scenic route back towards tongue had we decided to stick to the directions given by the sat nav and stay put we would never have found this beautiful part of scotland well I was about that for a video. I know it's very much different to my usual stuff and probably anything else you've watched. Um, the little bits of amateur acting I can only apologise for, but I just wanted to make something creative, something different, something fun that I actually enjoy making because obviously making vlogs and that kind of thing. I don't really enjoy it. I know it's the type of content that you prefer to watch, but I just thought I'd make something and learn some new editing techniques, some new tricks and just mess on really so yeah hopefully you learned something in the video as well but thanks for watching like comment subscribe and if you do want to support the channel make sure you pick up a travel guide whether it's a digital one or a physical ebook version and we also have photo books and other bits and bobs available the links for all of them are in the description thanks for watching see ya